Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Scotty D49 here with you once again for another installment of If You're New to the Hobby series. In this series, we cover off on all the basics of Warhammer 40k miniature wargaming and things that you can take and apply to other miniature wargames as well. In today's video, we're going to be answering the question What are the worst five things to do when basing your Warhammer 40k miniatures? So, without further ado, we're gonna get into it. Number one, only using static grass flock on your bases. Now, this method was a really old school style of method for basing miniatures back in the 90s. Now, it is quick. You just put the PVA glue down, you put the, the static flock on, it dries, you're good to go. But it doesn't look good because there are so many better options out there nowadays that you could actually use for your basing. There are numerous quick and easy basing options that you can use and you can find the one that best suits you and the army that you're working on. For myself personally, I find that PVA glue and modeling sand is the best option that I use. I then paint it, put some small tufts of static grass on there and they're good to go. However, you know, you can find the techniques that work for you or the basing style that also works for you through different materials, through different paint schemes, different styles of applying the basing, or even using sculpted resin or plastic bases as well, instead of actually using PVA and sand as well. So it all comes down to what you would prefer to use but do something more than just static grass on bases. Number two, using Games Workshop texture paints. Now, for everyone out there that's gonna cry bloody murder at me for saying, don't use these Games Workshop texture paints, hear me out. Now, if you're new to the hobby, you're gonna have limited funds, and I've touched on this aspect before, you're probably not wanting to go with the texture paints. And here's why. For a 24 mil pot, at least here in Australia, it's around 11, $12. There are cheaper alternatives because a small 24 mil pot will not go for an entire army. It will not cover maybe 20 models if you're lucky. Now, I can be wrong. I've never used the texture paint myself. I'm purely looking at it from a value for money aspect. They are great. If you choose to use them and you've got money to burn, feel free to do so. But there are other methods to get the exact same effect and they are much cheaper. For example, Vallejo actually create modeling texture paste that you can apply onto bases and then it'll dry and it comes up pretty similar to the Games Workshop texture paint, if not exactly the same, once you paint it the color that you're wanting it to be. Now, you can get these pots off Amazon, or if you can get it from your local hobby store, I highly recommend ordering it through them. Supporting your local store is always the best thing to do. However, on Amazon here in Australia, those pots for 200 mil of the texture paste is around $20. So when you look at it financially, you're getting eight times as much basing material that you can use than a single GW pot for $20 instead of paying 12 for that GW pot. The value for money is there. Sure, it's a little bit more to start off with and you've got to pay shipping and all that kind of stuff, but it will cover not just a small army, It'll cover a 2,000 point army, even three, 4,000 point army before you even have to get a new one, a new pot. And there's multiple colors. You can paint over it with your own color style as well. And you're gonna be saving a lot more money. Now, if you're looking for the crackling style, you can go out there and there are products that will do the crackling effect. Maybe not to the extent of Games Workshop's one, but they'll still show crackling effects. And you could also look up for numerous YouTube tutorials on how to make it yourself. And you can do it at the fraction of a cost in a large batch, put it in a container, 
make sure it stays good. And you would have saved so much money instead of going and buying pot after pot of texture paint to use on a 2,000, 3,000 point army over that time. So that's why I say don't use the Games Workshop texture paints, not because they aren't good, but because they aren't financially viable for large armies. Number three, not sealing your basing. So if you're gluing your basing material of choice to your models and don't seal it, then over time, what's actually gonna happen through wear and tear, through taking it out of your case, putting it back in, through moving it around on the battlefield, it's gonna come off. Whether it's flock, static grass, sand, green stuff, natural materials, etc. However, you can protect this by sealing it in some form. Depending on what you've chosen as your basing material, there are a couple of different ways that you can actually seal it. And this is gonna be the following. If you've applied the basing before the undercoat of the miniatures, then you can seal it by actually using the undercoat itself, or you can put a PVA glue uh, coat over the top before uh, doing the undercoat as well, and that'll seal it quite well. The undercoat will do the job fine if it's finer sand, uh, a finer sand grain, or it's the modeling paste. But PVA glue is probably your best bet if it's a larger sand grain or it's other materials. It's you know you're using a green stuff roller grip from Green Stuff World and putting that on your base, or you're using some natural bark or bamboo things like that. If you've applied the basing after you've painted the miniature, what you're going to want to do is more than likely PVA glue is going to be the best solution if it's that larger stuff. However, if it's the finer sand and finer material, likely the paint will do a really good job of being able to seal it at that stage as well. Now, if you're using a resin or plastic sculpted bases that you've painted, it is perfectly fine to leave them as is, but the paint will wear off over time in a similar manner how the material for basing will. So you still want to seal it. A coat of matte varnish will suffice for this, but if you've applied other basing material on it as well, you're likely going to want to do a PVA glue coat on there first to seal that and then do a matte varnish to take the sheen off that PVA glue. So with all these various different basing methods, you always in some form want to seal them so that they stay as close as possible to how they have finished. Number four, doing your basing before attaching the miniatures to their bases. Now, if you're keeping the miniature off their base to paint them and then putting the basing material onto the base before you put the miniature on there, what are you doing? Seriously, you should always be putting the miniature back onto its base before putting the basing material on there. The reason why is it's a plastic base. So having a plastic miniature, it'll have the best contact adhesion. Now, of course, I understand if it's a fine cast or a metal miniature, it might necessarily work the same way, but it's still best to glue the miniature on there first because then what you'll end up doing is you'll know where the footprint of that miniature is, where they're standing, and you'll be able to put the basing around it. Whereas if you actually leave the miniature off, do the basing, when you go to put the miniature on there, it's gonna be two things. You have to put it on top of the basing, which means it's gonna actually have a look that's out of place. And it's also gonna have a lot less contact adhesion because it's got that material that it then has to be put onto and more than likely super glued instead of plastic glued. And it's likely to snap off, whether it's in transit or whether that's on the table or if you drop the miniature, it's more than likely gonna break. So by gluing the miniature onto its base before you put the basing material on, not only stops it from breaking, it means it looks in place in the material that you put on it and the scene you're creating. And it's less likely and a heck of a lot less likely to snap off. However, if you are using pre-sculpted bases that are either plastic or resin, this does not apply. Feel free to paint those bases before you do put the miniature on there and then go from there. 
That is the only circumstance where you can do that, in my opinion, at least. Number five, not painting the rims of your bases. If you've gone to all this trouble of doing the, your nice bases across an entire army, you've dry brushed them to two layers over top of another coat of paint, you put uh, some static grass on there and they're looking great, um, but you haven't painted the rims of their bases, they're not finished. Because if you look at it as a whole, you could have dry brush marks around the rims and it doesn't look clean. You could have, you know, if you're using uh, pre-sculpted resin or plastic bases and you don't paint the rims, what are they gonna look like? They're gonna look like either the undercoat color, they're gonna have the, the colors on there that seep down onto that rim, or also they could just look like the resin or the plastic that if you've left them as that, they won't look finished. Now, it is hotly debated and in terms of how to actually paint the rims of your bases, whether you paint it black or you paint it the color. Um, now, it's up to you how you do it. I, I generally will paint it in a way that will match the underlying color that I do the dry brush on top of. So for my Space Marines and my Death Watch, for example, that's Mournfang Brown, because that's the color I use as the base layer on my basing to give it that nice earthy brown color. So I paint the rims that color. That'll mean that it's kind of immersed in that same atmosphere that same scene that you've kind of created on that base rather than the, the the black i personally find now you could do black as well and have a nice clean black rim have the base really then pop against the black and that is perfectly fine as well now my method it depends on the color of the basing that you're doing and how you're wanting to achieve that so that is also another option as well it's purely up to you how you do the rims of your bases just make sure that they look finished, that you paint them, that you tidy them up and that they're completed. So then your overall force will look nice, completely finished with its basing intact as well, that it doesn't look rushed or incomplete. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching another installment of if you're new to the hobby series, answering that question of what are the worst five things to do when first basing Warhammer 40k miniatures. I hope some of these things will show you things that you should be doing or help you to achieve better basing for your armies. That way you've got a better look on the table and a more complete look at that if you are wanting to upgrade your basing. Now, I do stream over on Twitch every Tuesday and Friday night and Saturdays as well, and you catch, can catch all the details down below in the description. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to drop a like. If you think I've missed something that should be in the video, let me know in the comments below. Or if you disagree with something that I've mentioned, feel free to also let me know why you think I'm wrong. But I've been Scotty D49, and I will catch you in the next video.